Hi. <laughs> so I'm Jose, and this is Amory, and um, we're gonna talk to you about a product that we've been working on for kind of a long time, actually. Um, and we uh, we actually didn't know the title of our presentation until we got here this morning, um, so we had to scramble a little bit. Um, and uh, we thought that we would give you a little bit of background um, about the, the story, about how this came to be. I welcome people online if I can. I don't want to be rude. Um, there's just a few of us here. It's very intimate. So, um, uh, Because it really is a journey, um, and it fits with uh, some of the themes from this morning's keynote, and then even Shelly today, too. So, um, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm Jose, this is Anne-Marie uh, Sung Park, who you probably know, um, works here, and we've been working on this uh, project. We work uh, at CASP, associated with Universal Design for Learning, um, and I've been working on this for since almost 12 years now, so let's go ahead to the next one. Um, as you know, everything uh, at CAST is about Universal Design for Learning, based on the three uh, networks that we have in our brains, the part of our brain that we use for receiving information, the part that we use to act on it and be strategic about it, and then the part of our brain that makes us care about uh, what we're learning, and that's the engagement, um, that's the engagement network. Um, and if you're familiar with this area, I'm sure you've heard UDL before, but the point of, of this too is it's just an example of how you can actually use and apply UDL to look at learner variability in a specific context, like how do you actually do it? And this is a story of what we, what we chose to do. So, uh, well, let's, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us who you are and um, where you're from. Are you a science teacher? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. You had a bit of a drive. Yeah. <laughs> didn't you? And I don't know if anybody's, if anybody wants to say where they're from online, please do. We welcome you. Um, okay. Uh, and familiar with UDL? Kind of pretty familiar? Sort of familiar? Not, not at all? Okay. That's good. All right. Okay. So we're going to uh, give you the backstory around what, um, what Corgi is. Um, we're going to show you the ways in which we've uh, iterated it over time, and we're going to give you a chance to, to try it out. Uh, and hopefully you'll like it enough to use it when your schools or with your colleagues. It's free, um, freely available, um, paid for with your tax dollars, so you might as well use it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, so I think that kind of says what we just did. OK, so over there's our Corgi um, icon, I think. Interest in the in the product went uh, through the roof when we um, came up with that. That's Kara's lovely work, or is it? Yeah. Was it Cassie? Yeah. Anyway, we love our little corgi, and we actually have some animated ones with their their tongues wagging a little bit too, which you'll see later. Um, so you, you know, we were uh, talking um, this morning. We were hearing this morning a lot about like what's wrong with schools um, that we're focusing on a lot of the the wrong things, a lot of things that we're doing are, are uh, meeting at cross purposes, too standardized, um, isolating, not taking kids where they are. And, and um, Corgi was motivated by some of those same um, concerns. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a, a bit of a journey. So that's what it's been about. So the journey um, actually started, you know, I've actually, you can see from my, my white hair, um, that I've been at this for uh, a long time. I was a special ed teacher in the 80s, um, worked in Washington State, uh, eventually uh, got into the, to the research business and did it for, uh, have been doing it for a long time. Um, and uh, we were getting frustrated with kind of telling the same story, which was something like this. You know, we're all working pretty hard, we're coming up with cool things, uh, things that we think work. And yet when we look at the data, we see stuff like this, right? We see the gaps. And we're just kind of sick and tired of it. 
you know, I don't want to retire and have this be the story of how I spent my professional life. And a bunch of us felt the, felt the same way. So we were, go ahead. Yeah, so we were just, we just wanted to um, do something a little bit different. And um, this was at the beginning of the Obama administration. And um, the, the Obama signature investment was called the Investing in Innovation Fund. And uh, basically, uh, it was unique in a couple of ways. One way, it was, notice the word there was innovation. And if there's anything that you, know, you can point to in the United States over the last generation uh, that's been successful has been innovation and technology right here in Silicon Valley, right? The, all of the companies that have changed all the way th that we live, the way we shop, um, changed life around the world, right? So that's proof that we can do some things well when we put our minds to it. And maybe if we do that in education, we can actually um, you know, um, make a difference demonstrably better than we'd had before. The, the other thing that uh, I3 program wanted uh, people to do is to not just come up with stuff out of, out of thin air, right? They wanted you to have some evidence, right? And so we, at that time, we were at SRI, um, and the team with the University of Kansas uh, decided to take what's known as the strategic instruction model, uh, which had, had a long history of research um, for kids with disabilities in a variety of content areas, but started in the 80s and 90s, and started in, um, on paper-based uh, paper based and, and transparencies. I don't know if you remember those, but people used to have these transparencies, so funny now. Um, and the thinking was, well, well, if people had those smart ideas today, wouldn't you would do something different? So that was kind of our motivating um, feature. So here is kind of the, the story that we were able to get uh, the money to do. We were basically saying that the, the 21st century is not like the 20th century. Um, that the things that we're, you know, our students are going to need to be able to do are just vastly different. Knowing content, it's silly to know content when Google's sitting there, right? But you're going to need to know how to get along with other people. You're going to need to be able to do things that computers can't do. You're going to need to think outside the box. Um, you are going to change your career probably multiple times, right? So it's a very different environment that kids are going into. Uh, we see it all. We, are, we see it already. My daughter's 26, and she's had three careers already. Um, so uh, it's happening, and the education system needs to respond to that. Uh, this is just, you know, an example of uh, jobs that are going to exist in the future. Some have already started, but there are there are jobs that didn't exist uh, in the past. You know, you know, space tourist client. You know, a civilian drone controller. Uh, um, alternative, alternative energy developer, you know, all of those things are things that didn't exist before. And that's going to continue to happen. But there's a common theme, which is that um, these kinds of thinking skills, higher order thinking skills, problem solving, those are the things that are going to make the difference in this century, not, you know, rote procedures, not straight up content. That's what all these things have in common. So we wanted to build something that was going to help, help do that. Um, Another, we just put this in here. Um, I come from a special ed background as a teacher and as a researcher. And we heard today uh, from multiple, from both of the, the keynoters, you know, that it's, you know, a mildly useful construct in some ways, right? That, um, that you know, it tells you less about a person uh, that when you know whether they fall into special education than what there really is to know about them in terms of their strengths, their abilities, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, and this way of organizing humans into these categories we now know is like a vast oversimplification of what really happens when um, for most humans it's much more, it's much more, it's much fuzzier than this. All of us have uh, aspects of those just as um, Shelley was talking about. So this was important for us to be building for that diversity. Go ahead. Okay, so this is I think essentially the point uh, that um, I was trying to, to make earlier um, that the labor market is changing um, and the problem we're trying to address is that uh, kids with disabilities in particular are being poorly served by, the, um, by our current practices. So. Okay, so this is just a screenshot of uh, Corgi on a, um, on a uh, tablet. Uh, we're going to get to a, a walkthrough of it, but uh, the basic kind of teaser is that 
uh, Corgi is a Google application. So all of the things that you use, that you're used to, when you use a Google application, those are things that you can use um, in Corgi as well. And so the idea is um, kids are already using Google Docs, right? So they are already familiar with sharing and all of that kind of stuff. And you want to build on what kids are already doing. And so that was part of it. Plus, um, Google Classroom is growing, right? And it's, uh, it's the most popular learning management system. So it made sense for us to try to make sure that it worked with that. So uh, what's next? OK, here, um, this is the UDL framework. Um, since you seem a little bit new to it, I can, uh, I'll just go through it quickly. The, these are the three um, regions of the brain. Um, the representation network, which is the what of learning, action and expression, which is the how of learning, and then the engagement network, which is the why of learning. And within each of those, um, uh, UDL has what we call guidelines. And within each of the guidelines, there are options, right? Because it's all about learner variability. So you want to create options for being um, interested or motivated, um, options for sustaining effort and persistence. Uh, similarly, in representation, providing multiple wave visuals, text, audio. Um, and then there's uh, ordinality to the framework, which goes from um, basic access. So kind of just think of it as a curb cut. It allows you just to get onto it. It doesn't help you beyond that, all the way up to what are two higher order thinking skills, which are, uh, which in UDL terms, we refer to as expert learners who are uh, self-motivated, who can set their own, uh, own goals, monitor their progress, and be strategic. And that's, that's what we want for all of us as we grow up, and that's what we think. Uh, so this is a design framework which can be used to all, for almost any kind of um, uh, educational solution. Um, from, you know, from babies up through uh, the workforce and seniors. So, uh, In the case of, um, of uh, Corgi, and one of the things we just we wanted to bring up is that whenever you're doing anything, if you're creating a lesson plan, if you're building an application, you have lots of choices, but that you have to make some decisions. It's not, le it's not limitless. Um, and so you have to make some choices. And some of them are good, and you may be good, some of them not. But these are the kinds of ones that we chose to put into Corgi. We thought collaboration was going to be really important. We wanted to have uh, teacher supports uh, built in. We wanted to make sure there was video. We wanted to make sure there was, there was image, text-to-speech, um, and that we wanted to have uh, progress. And then importantly, we wanted to think about the way kids share information today, which is, if you think of Instagram stories, it's not like a piece of paper anymore. It's a series of, of slides, really, with different kinds of content, and it tells a story. And so that's the vocabulary that kids are using these days, and that's what we were hoping to build with, with Corgi. So, OK. Just a, a plug that we are required to do is who we work for. Uh, we work with Santa Clara, Evergreen, and KU. Um, it's funded by the National Science Foundation and Office of Special Education Programs. Um, and first, let's just talk about how we went through the design. Um, I don't know if, if you're familiar with design thinking. Have you seen these before? So it's messy, right? Like the idea is that uh, there's an idea, and you know we often think that it's a straight line to the final product. And the reality is, it ain't ever like that. And um, in the case of Corgi, uh, which was not called Corgi, by the way, at the time when we started. We said, and I remember actually saying this to our team, every design project I've ever been in, um, the final product was never, ever what we thought it was going to be. Um, only in the case of Corgi, it was way, way um, different than we thought it was going to be. So what we proposed actually was that we were going to um, build apps for the phones because we were making the case that um, we were making the case that kids are carrying these things around. They use them all the time. They take pictures with their friends. They share. Um, and you know, it's in their pockets all the time, so it would be right there. Wouldn't that, isn't that great? You know, connecting school and informal learning and formal learning and all that stuff. Um, and um, it seemed great, and that's, how we, that's what we got the money to do. And um, we were working with um, uh, uh, Alameda, Alameda School District, Unified, here in California, and then a, a school district in Virginia. And um, 
you know, and we were, we were co-designing with teachers and we were spending your tax dollars right along the way. And there was the tech guy in Virginia who said, um, he would just come up to me and he said, we have a zero cell phone policy in this district. And you look at it in the class and all the kids are like, and I'm like, it doesn't look all that zero tolerant to me. And he would just say, zero tolerance for cell phones. So I just sort of went along, we just sort of went along with it, oh, he's funny. Um, and then, but we spent, we went two years and uh, we had a meeting where we had, we were supposed to go to the next phase. And he called me aside and he said, I'm just gonna tell you, this is never gonna happen here. This is not gonna happen. And you can take it all the way to the school board, but uh, I golf with those guys and you don't, and you're gonna lose. So we've spent like a million dollars at this point, you know? So I'm actually driving back to Washington thinking that we're gonna have to give back the money. We're just gonna have to give back the money. We're just like, oh God, you know, like, what are we gonna do? We've spent the money, we're, you know. And uh, my boss said, you are not giving back the money. <laughs> so we had to regroup and we actually, uh, we did a retreat down in San Luis Obispo um, and we reconsidered you know, what could we possibly do? And, um, and really, at that point, we were just noticing that we had gone from the transition of, I mean, you probably remember, we used to, like, we used to have Word documents that we passed around, and there was all that version control, and it was horrible. And we were starting to use Google Docs more. Like, we were just noticing that that was happening in the world, and we were noticing that schools were using Google um, uh, Google Classroom more and Google Docs. And so we thought, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we can't do it with a phone. Maybe we'll do it with Google Docs. So we came up with a, a series of designs and we had no idea if it was even possible. None. Um, uh, but it turned out we're here. So it did, we did come up with something, but go ahead. So um, the basic idea, these are the, uh, the graphic organizers. And I'll show you another one in a moment, but you're familiar with them, and these are the ones that came from the uh, from the University of Kansas. But you know, there's a there's a structure to them, and there's a particular kind of content, and the order that the content's supposed to go in, and and often delivered with um, often delivered with uh, overhead injectors. And this is what we ultimately uh, came up to. So this was the paper-based version. This is the um, Corgi first Corgi version. I'll show a little bit more. Um, this is just another example, but just, just so you can see, they all have uh, a visual structure. Um, this is a comparison table comparing Lamarck and Darwin, and you have characteristics of both, and then ways in which they're similar. Well, you have categories that they're in, ways in which they're similar, ways in which they're different, and then a summary statement. They're all kind of similar this way. The, the basic idea, though, is not so much that it's this particular content, but that it's a way of thinking. Right, that that you that kids are actually learning how to recognize that this is a place where I need to think about comparing things, and here's a structured way to do it. You know, um, so go on to the next one. So this is uh, the compare. This is the same thing, uh, the, the same basic structure, and in the first Corgi, uh, we really tried to to be uh, true to the visual structure of the of the um, the paper-based version. So, you know, we had comparison, we have concept A, concept B, characteristics, um, all of the other things pretty much the same, students walk through. Um, however, we have um, text-to-speech, we have translation, we have uh, text, we have, um, we have uh, support built in, so if you want to know what something's about, um, kids can collaborate on these things as you do in Google Docs. And um, this version, and um, we did two uh, experimental studies um, using this version with um, positive results, both in US history and in science, um, with particularly good results for kids with disabilities. So, all right. So now we are, we went from version one to version two. Um, the big shift uh, was that uh, we reorganized, we, we sort of gave up the old structure right, because the old structure was really based on an eight and a half by 12, uh, 11 piece of paper. And we realized that wasn't functional, that was just the technology, right? Like that was, just, like it was a silly thing to be a slave to. 
Um, and so what we have is a series of tabs which walk students through the process. Um, so they're not seeing the whole thing all at once unless they want to. Um, and so the focus is on particular parts of their guide, which Emily will show you in a moment. Um, included um, uh, support for videos, support for images, and then new ways for students to their work. Um, go ahead. And this is the, um, the new version, I guess we're calling version 2.5, which provides support for uh, teachers to provide um, material directly in the, uh, the application for students. Um, it can be a note to the students, watch, like watch this and then uh, think about these questions. Um, and that can be hidden or uh, displayed. Um, okay. And. So this is one of the organizer handles. Oh, I see. Okay. So you okay. see the whole guide. Right. Um, okay. All right. So that's kind of the history. Um, it's, uh, you know, motivated by the same big problems, using UDL, making some choices, learning from users, um, doing some testing, and uh, iterating on it. So that's where we are, and um, we're going to show it to you now, and if you want to go through, you can do so. Um, or you're going to do it there, and I'm just going to... Okay, you're going to talk, though, right? So, I'll talk and I'll, yeah, so talk I and I'll to... be Van away. I'll just point. Okay, let me stop sharing this. Hold on. Yeah, you have to go there. And stop, stop sharing. sharing and then share again. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Hi. So I'm just going to um, give you a little look at the tool now that we've, you know, kind of giving you the history. Um, so this is kind of the home page. Once you've logged in um, using your Google account, this would be the page. Um, since I've already been in here, it has my, my, my most recent Corgi guides. But um, we have um, four different guides that we've created. We have a cause and effect guide. We have a question exploration a comparison and um, a CER. So those are the, the guides that we've, we've created so far, but we hope in the future that we can make some more guides um, that help the kids to expand their higher order thinking, but right now it's just those three. Um, today I'm gonna show you an example of a cause and effect. Um, I have partially filled out this guide so you can see um, it's on climate change, um, wildfires in particular, that's pretty important in California. So um, I'm gonna show you this example. I've already filled out some of the information, so some of it will be filled out, but then I'll show you some, some of the questions. So like Jose was sh um, sharing with you, um, the kids go through a series of steps. All of our guides have a series of steps, and all of them have an essential question and a key term. Those are the same for all the guides. And then they, they'll go through um, a, a bunch of questions, and we hope that by going through all these questions that the kids will be able to figure out, okay, this is what, you know, I'm learning this kind of content, I will need to do a cause and effect, or I'll need to do a comparison. And when you do a cause and effect, you should always think about the main idea, the main event of whatever you're thinking about, um, the causes, the relationship of those causes to the, um, the main event, and also the effects. And if you, you do it enough, then you build this habit of mind, and then you'll be able to do this all the time and be able to, you know, learn any kind of content. Um, so like I said, we have a, a a series here. Um, we have our um, um, features here, so you can, you know, I can show you. Uh, well, I think it's because I'm sharing through here, but it, it it'll, can read text to you. Um, you can also speak into um, to uh, in a tool, and then it'll respond to your whatever the content is. We also have a dictionary function. Um, and we have a translate. Right now, we are currently only have Spanish, but hopefully, um, further on, you know, once this tool continues, we can add some other languages. Um, we also have a collaborator tool here. So, like Word documents or any 
Google Sheets, or you could work with other people, and so you could see who's working with you. Currently, I'm not working with anyone, so nothing's appearing there, but you can also work with people just like Google Docs. Um, we also have this panel at the bottom that's just kind of your step through, so you can go to each of the steps. So, um, Every guide always starts off with essential questions. So my essential question for this guide is, how is climate change affecting wildfire, wildfires? Um, what do you do to predict will happen for the frequency of wildfire? So that's the essential question. That's what the child is, the student is, you know, focusing on. Um, as Jose said, that any of these questions, you can add media or um, a YouTube video, or if you have any pictures that you want to enhance your content. Maybe some children have a hard time coming up with words um, and they can, you know, find an image that answers that question or so we're trying to help, you know, kids in any way. So I'll show you how we can do this. So I'm going to add an image. So since we're um, and in adding an image, you can upload from your device. You could search the web, enter a URL, or insert from your drive. Um, I will just search the web. So you put in fires. Um, and it comes up with a bunch of images. This one like, here looks good, so I'll use that. So it's just kind of a way to enhance your understanding of um, what you're learning. Um, let's see, sorry. So I'll go into the next step. Oh, um, also, in every, um, every step, you can always add in key terms. So you can always select this. One of the big things we always, in learning, key terms is a big thing. Like, teachers can either, you know, supply some of those key terms, or along the way, as you're learning more, you can just add that to your bank. Um, so, and we also have a step for key terms, so you can see it right here. Um, is the key terms and you can add as many key terms or you can take away as many key terms as whatever you um, think is necessary okay oops sorry I went too far let me go back um one of our new things that we just included was this new instruction piece and so mm -hmm. at any point could add in instructions for their kids before, you know if they're focusing on one you know so this one's a, what is the main event so the teacher wants them to um, watch a video uh, maybe she'll have some questions for them to think about, um, but this is one of the great things that they can they can modify it, they can adjust it, customize it so that it helps the students. So here, um, there is a video for the child to watch before they answer this question to give them some more feedback. Um, also, at any time, that the student can select this organizer, and that's basically um, the whole organizer. So if they are on a specific question, like we're on step three, want to go see like, what they wrote in somewhere else, you can see the whole thing at that point. And if you want to expand it to the whole whole page, you can, or you can collapse it, or you can hide it. The child has the ability to do whatever they see fit. But if there is a teacher instruction, that always appears first, so that the child will always read that first. Um, yeah, so here, there's some more instruction for the child to, um, to be able to figure this out. Um, again, all of the text is at, uh, you, you add it into the orange boxes so the child is, knows exactly where they should be entering in their information. Um, for this one, this is the relationship. So here we have um, a pop, you know, a list for the child to choose from. So that they're having a, you know, not sure exactly how they want to connect these two, um, the causes to the main event. We have a list for them to help them kind of come up with words. And if not, they can come up with their own words. They just write over it. Um, so yeah, so we just go through this series of steps and you can, like as I said, the child has the ability to customize the Corgi guide as they, as they like to whether to see the teacher instruction um, or the whole organizer or just that specific question. Um, so as you go through, um, you can answer the questions. Um, our final thing, after you've completed a whole Corgi guide, we have a review page. So that's kind of just a check for the child to be able to go through and see the whole thing. So, as you can see in the top, it'll kind of tell me like, oh, you haven't entered in at step four for the cause of the main event, or you haven't, or the relationship at step seven. It'll it'll let the child know that like, you've skipped these questions and maybe you want to go back through. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity just to review it as a whole, going through and seeing how the connections are and understanding. Um, so the, that's kind of the final thing once you've done, gone through a whole Corgi guide. And then the last thing that we um, we're really excited about is that we give students an option to share in different ways. So you could either post to Google Classroom, which your teacher um, might want, or you can print this as a PDF, or you can share this guide with a student, or you can share it with your teacher, or you can create a presentation. Um, the presentation 
takes everything that you did in, in that corgi guide and it puts it into a presentation and then corgi's panting. Yeah, he's panting. <laughs> <laughs> he's working. He's working. He's working hard to get it all ready. So that'll pull all of your images um, and put presentation. At this time, the student can then not have to worry about the structure. We know that students get a lot of stress about, oh my God, I put it all together. And now they've got a corgi um, process of filling it all in, and then it just puts it into their um, PowerPoint so that they can then do what they, they can edit, they can change the styles, they can do whatever they want. Um, and they can also share this with back to their teacher. So let me just go back. Also, you know, in a UDL way, that's like an, an alternative way of showing what you have. Right, right you exactly. It could be a deliverable by itself. It could also be a, you know, a support for a presentation, um, like that. Too. Right. Um, and then, of course, you can also, there we have a sidebar of menus so that you can make copies of this or you can share it, pre preview, m many of the similar things that were on this page. So um, I think that is all for sharing right now. Um, let me just see if there's other. Um, yeah, so I think um, at this point, let me um, stop sharing. And then we're going to give you guys the opportunity. I'm not sure if you guys have computers. Um, oh, sorry. Um, let me share. And it's that the, the guide that I was working on, just have you explore it and enter in information and um, see what you think about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I'm sorry, there's a few, a few things. So you will, um, when you log in, you use your Google account. Um, there will be a few things to, um, that you have to authorize your account so that we have access, we won't have access to your account, but that the corgis can be created and then they're saved onto your Google account. We, we cannot see your Google account at all, but it, so it'll have a couple um, authorization things for you to okay. Did you have a question? Yeah. A couple. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, would question. Would you like me to save them or yeah, no. save them? No, that's fine. Okay. So, I'm uh, sorry, this sh so the people out there can hear or how do we? Okay, um, sure, why don't we break it? Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll yeah. sorry what happened. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, where should I? Okay. <laughs> Is this far enough? <laughs> um, so I just, upon like first introduction, am very excited about this tool. This is something that I think a lot of my teachers will enjoy using, especially because of how smoothly it seems like it it interacts with Google and you're right a lot of teachers are are doing Google classroom setups the whole shebang especially over the pandemic it was it was huge um, and so I guess I'm wondering on the back end if a student creates their own corgi will the teacher have access and be able to look at it while it's in progress or will they have to wait until it's been kind of consolidated and packaged and then submitted to the teacher. So uh, this has a new Google app. You can share it with anybody with a, with a Gmail account. Uh, so the teacher can just add it as a collaborator. Uh -huh. And then the teacher can see um, the Corgi as it's been, you know, as, as it's been prepared. OK. OK. And theoretically, although we have a transcript issue from, from Chrome, it could be a, we, we have wanted this uh, type of way to do comments. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like doing Google Docs and all the comments, so it's actually not too difficult to do, but it, but it could be, it could be done, you could, you could observe it, provided you could mm -hmm. some hard work, mm -hmm. so you could still enjoy it, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good workaround. That's a good workaround. Um, okay, and my next comment is more of an affirmation. Um, I feel like this packaging and at least the structure of it 
is kind of reminding me quite a bit of like hyperdocs or hyperslides. And I feel like that was a movement, especially over the pandemic, where teachers were trying to make their information more engaging and accessible. But I like this better because of how it's formatted and um, and just how it's presented. It's it's lovely and it's and it's simple, but it's not. And so that that was not a question, but just a thank you, because I'm excited to share this with my teachers. Um, and I guess I'm also grateful that you're giving us playtime because I'd like to get in here and, <laughs> and see what it looks like. Um, I guess my another question I have is, um, have, you noticed, have you noticed any speed bumps in having the teachers create corgis that are then shared with the students to then modify themselves? Or would you say they're pretty easily copied? Yeah, they're very easily copied, mm. yeah. So it can be applied in that manner to get these lessons. And you know, we are looking at uh, adopting a new framework. And that framework for mathematics does include quite a bit more. Quite a bit more of like that data science emphasis, mm -hmm. the focus on phenomena. So I feel like we're slowly incorporating more of these components into the math world. And this is a lovely tool that can that can facilitate that. Yeah. So I'm yeah I'm Great. affirming again <laughs> that I'm very excited. <laughs> I I definitely want to affirm as well. I I uh, left the classroom when we were still using transparency. <laughs> um, so but <clears throat> I see this exactly i would show a picture right get my kids engaged with a picture or video and then you know then we'd be writing things down on the transparency so it just is transitions so smoothly over yeah so so when we were first designing it yeah. we didn't know whether it was going to work mm -hmm. really um and we were in alameda and uh we tried it out with a, a class of kids who were mostly college-bound kids and um they were you know they didn't they needed very little like support they were able to just do it and then we tried it in the learning st strategies class and they were able to use it too their the, the type of input was different but they were able to like they were familiar with all the metaphors so i have one more question um do you foresee more graphic organizers um coming soon um probably not soon um but we hope to continue this project Yeah, one of the things that we've been thinking about, there are a whole bunch of different um, <coughs> cast tools, mm -hmm. some that are, you know, like Corgi, others that are about supporting um, getting meaning from text in general, um, or uh, providing a portfolio. And we have got some people asking, well, why do you not have these things all together in one thing? And of course, that's because they're each funded by a different funder, right? right. So, um, uh, so that is, you know, the, maybe the next phase is to make a, a, a kind of a suite of tools that they could use in lots of different places. Yeah. Do, are there any questions online or anything that we should be looking um, at? There or? are no questions online yet. Okay, um, that's fine. Folks, if you're online and you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat. 
Great. <laughs> Great. So if you have any questions, we'll be here and then we can come back in a little bit and see what you think. It is um, not, you know, but we, we make fun of pen and paper a lot, you know, in the tech world. But the reality is there are ways in which the, um, the pen and paper is actually more flexible than um, digital. And in particular, establishing these relationships with arrows, um, pretty easy to do on pen and paper, really hard to do, um, really, really hard. Yeah, our poor programmer. Is tired of saying that. Boris, wherever you are. <laughs> so we're almost to the end here. I know we've already had um, a chance for discussion, um, but I don't know if. Um, Anything else has come up, either here in the room or online? Uh, nothing come up online? OK. Um, so we're interested in um, basic questions of what you think about it, um, what do you think it will help students learn, how easy it is, um, would you use it, or would others use it, and why, and then um, what would you like us to change? And you can tell us now, or you can email us, or um, Talk to Sung if you know where Sung is. He's, uh, he works on this project too. Um, anyway, any, anything else? I know you've already asked. Anything else pop into your minds? No? Okay. Yeah. Also, um, just submitted a uh, proposal for the National Science Foundation to. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, something called uh, which we call Data Adventures, which are to build um, data science camps for uh, kids in the middle school years, uh, where they learn to think about think like data scientists, um, and they get to you know ask an important question. Um, go through the data science process, finding data, um, analyzing it, presenting it, making some recommendations. And there are uh, some fun ones. I don't know if you've seen, there's ones about um, junk food consumption, where kids monitor their own junk food consumption. They learn about nutrition and health and economics. And um, we also have one where they're going to build some, Harry, some um, Harry Potter spells um, to uh, solve illnesses and health and things like that. So stay tuned. Well, f and thank you for coming. We know you had other things to do, and it's late in the day, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks to those who came online. Thanks to you. Um, thanks, Sung, who's running. Like, are you like looking at all the other rooms simultaneously right now? That, yeah. <laughs> Sung knows all. So um, anyway, so thanks very much. Please use it um, and tell your friends about it. And if you want to work with us uh, or work with the tool, please get in touch. Um, we're always looking for teachers to try things out with. And okay, thank you. Enjoy. Bye bye. <laughs>